Hey folks, Steve Lewis here. Welcome to Relevance for Today. I've got an amazing show today. My amazing wife, Barb Lewis, is with me. We're going to be talking to her and do an interview with her so she can share her life with us. So stay tuned, folks. Okay, we are back. Barb Lewis, welcome to the show, beautiful. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. Yes, it's good to have her on the show. As most of you know, you recognize her voice because you also know that she is my co-host on Outlook for a Brighter Day, the podcast show that we do together. Isn't that right, Mrs. Lewis? we love doing that. Yes, it's awesome. And so for this episode in Relevance for Today, I wanted to bring her over to my show So I can talk to her so she can encourage you folks because she has an amazing life to share with you. So we're going to start straight in this thing. So Mrs. Lewis, first of all, tell the viewers and listeners, where are you from? I am from New Brunswick, Canada. I am a maritime girl Mm -hmm. and I moved over to the States uh, almost 30 years ago. Um, so now we live right on the border of Maine and Canada and we can just look across the field and see into my, um, naturally born homeland. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's been, um, a honor and a privilege to be able to live in the States, uh, for as long as I have and wonderful people on both sides of the border. Yes. Yes. You're amazing. (laughs) <laughs> it's great to have you on the show, beautiful. So speaking of you being over here, how long have you been over here now? We've known each other since 1990. Yeah. Um, and uh, when do we I've get married, in, Mrs. Lewis? I've been over here 29 years. 29 years. Yeah. We got married June Permanent 1st. Permanent resident, so yes. I'm permanently here. <laughs> permanently here, folks. <laughs> yes. Can't get so. rid of me now. Uh, yeah, she said yes. I was in the Gulf War at the time and proposed, and she said yes, and been a blessing ever since. We've never looked back. Married June 1st, 1991. I knew a good thing when I saw it. That's my line. No, that's mine. <laughs> that's my line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's mine, yes. everybody. I saw her and I heard these sounds, folks. I'm telling you. It's like, what oh. is that? Oh, brother. I've got oh. to get to know her. <laughs> <Help>. <laughs> yeah, so after we got married, hey, listen, we got married in 1991. And yes. then God blessed us with some beautiful children, too, yes. in our marriage. Yes. So we have a beautiful daughter. Her name is Samantha Marie. Yes. Samantha Marie. Um, she's absolutely lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a She is a director of Lemongrass Spa. She's yes. doing very well with her she business is. in that. She's a go-getter. Mm-hmm. You can't stop her. Um, she's given us a beautiful grandson, Xavier. Xavier Marcellus. Yes. And he's probably going to be a podcaster one day, just like <laughs> Pop Pop. Um, and awesome. our son, Stephen Andrew, um, he is absolutely awesome. One of the biggest personalities yes, a um, go-getter. that you could ever meet. And he is an absolute go-getter. He's mm-hmm. a non-stopper. Um, he is one of these guys that when he sets his mind to it, you ain't going to stop him. You yes. just can't. He will. They both are like yeah, that. They're, they're both they're, like they're, that. Both will achieve their goals. Yes. So we've been blessed with some beautiful yeah. people, some beautiful children. Definitely. We're privileged. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And so speaking of the children, I really want to talk to you. One of the things I want to address in this interview is motherhood. Yes. Because you are an amazing mother. I have a lot of respect for you. I look up to you in that way. Precious, beautiful woman, oh, God. Lord. <laughs> but no, on a serious note, though, because I was in the Air Force, you were home with the kids. Mm-hmm. And then while I was in the Air Force, I got sick. Yeah. And ended up getting a medical retirement out of the Air Force. And so you became the breadwinner of the family. So tell us about that from your side. Well, um, I was... At that time, a CNA, Mm -hmm. when you got sick and uh, you had mixed connective tissue disease, of course, and we um, had a wonderful doctor. Mm -hmm. He was the founding father of your disease. Dr. Sharp. Dr. Sharp, if you're listening, thank you for everything you've done Mm -hmm. for us and Stephen. And there was an 80%, he said, morbidity 
rate in your disease. Um, 20% mortality rate. He said he wouldn't know anything for two years. So I'm a young 20 something year old woman with two little children Mm. and I'm looking at an 80% chance of being literally a widow. Um, and 20% chance of my husband living, um, and taking care of us. So, um, I had to make some decisions. And so I went to nursing school at that time and I continued to work full time and I went into an accelerated program so I could get in and out. Mm. Um, there was lots of days that I didn't think I was going to make it through, um, you know, going home, studying 250, 300 pages to take three or four exams the next day. Um, but I did it and we did it together as a family. And I remember coming home from school crying and saying, I can't do this. I can't pass every test. It's a 78. If you don't make 78, you're done. Mm. And, um, you, Steve pushed me through. He's like, you can do this, Barb. You can do this. Um, you're smart, you're strong willed, you can do this. So mm-hmm. with a lot of encouragement, um, I did it. I graduated and I became a nurse and that's what I've been doing ever since. And you graduated when in 1997, 99, 90 something. Yeah. Yeah. 97. <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> yeah. Tw- but over 20 years over ago. Over 20 years ago. Over 20. Yes. And, and I've been uh, in nursing since 96. Wow. So. Yeah. yeah. And I can't thank you enough for that, for taking the steps that you took to provide for us. I mean, I had my retirement and disability, but. You actually took it upon yourself to get up and go out there and become the breadwinner for the family and help take care of us. And that really means a lot to me. Well, thank you. Yes. And for all you mothers out there, I mean, uh, we might as well speak on this right now. And the fact is that what advice do you have for other single moms out there, other mothers who have to take the lead because maybe the husband is sick? and uh, is unable to work and so forth. There's many situations out there like that. Well, moms, um, I know that you all are out there. Um, Some of you are in the same boat that I was where your husband is sick and you don't know uh, what what the sickness is going to bring to your family. Um, There might be some moms out there where... Whatever the circumstance was, you're a single mom Mm. at home. You're facing everything alone, your mom and dad. Right. Um, So what I would say to you, set your sights high. Don't fail yourself. Mm. Do what you have to do because at the end of the day, it's going to be you and your family. Um, And if you're going to be the breadwinner, Good on you. Mm. Um, I want to link arms with you women and all of us link arms together and make each other stronger and build each other up and say, yes, you can do this Mm -hmm. wherever you're at, be it um, the job at Walmart and you're going to work yourself up, be it your goals are to get into a college or a university and you might have to work full time while you're doing it. Tell yourself, I can do this. I am doing this and nothing's going to break my stride. I will do this. Mm. Believe in yourself. And if you can get together with some people that can build you up, that can speak into your life, that can help you out, get in touch with those people, link arms with those people because they're going to be vital in your life. Many days I came home crying and saying, Stephen, I can't do this anymore. I can't, I can't. And he held me up and he said, you can, Barb, you can do this just one day at a time. And I did it. If I can do it, I promise you in your circumstances, in your position today, you can do it too. Mm-hmm. Yep. We did a lot of praying, you know, a God gave praying. her the strength she needed. Like she said, she was reading over 200 and some odd pages, studying them, studying them for the next day and having exams. And it was a lot because with the accelerated course that she took, it was what, 
two years into one or four yeah, years into it, two? No, it was a 13 year program. It was um, 13 month. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was going to say 13, <laughs> 13 years. And we're like, what? Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> oh. um, but it was no breaks. It, it was just straight through. Yeah. 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 And I went to school with a lot of great other ladies and we really bonded and we pushed each other and we pushed each other and we listened to each other cry and we dried each other's tears mm. and we'd get up out of class and we'd go in the bathroom and slap cold water on our face because we was in a classroom for three hours and maybe been up all night studying. Wow. And, um, so that was my routine. I would usually get home about five thirty every night mm -hmm. And I would go to bed at eight. I would get up at midnight. Wow. You remember this? Yes. I would make a whole pot of coffee. <laughs> She's getting jacked up. Yeah. I would get all my books out on the table and from midnight to six o'clock in the morning, Gee, I would that? study. I would study and I would study and I would study. And from six, six to six thirty, I'd get ready for school or to be at a hospital and, or in a classroom. Mm. And from, I think it started around seven, seven thirty, and I didn't get home till five, five thirty at night. And then Friday, Saturday, Sundays, I'd work 12 hour shifts. Gee whiz. Wow. Yeah. And I did it. Yep. She did it through folks. The, I'm telling you, I'm a witness. Just, just faith and one day at a time yep. and I can do this. Lots of tears. It wasn't easy, mm. but I can tell you this L looking back, I would not change a thing. Mm. Stepping into it. I thought I can't do this. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Looking back, it was well worth the fight. Yes. I've been able to with Steven by my side, We've been able to provide a good life mm -hmm. for our family and for each other and yeah. God being in the center of it. And yes, God got me through a lot of those days, mm -hmm. a lot of those days. Yeah. I mean, the look on your face that day you were walking across that stage when you got your nursing certificate. Oh my God. That was <laughs> That's like priceless. one of the happiest days of my life. Oh my goodness. Boy, they yes. were walking tall. Oh my word. Yeah. It was that I day. I remember that day well. And then the day they called you and said you passed your exams. Yes. Man, that was some nervous times. Well, it, it <laughs> was because our instructor said, okay, now when, when you girls go take this Neclex test, the least amount of questions you can have, I want to say she said 78. So I'm going to say 78 and the most you can have is 200 and it was on computer. She said, if you stop at 78, one of two things happened. You did really, really well. The computer says you've exceeded, you've excelled and you know everything or you know nothing. Wow. <laughs> and it can't take you any further because you just bombed out so bad. If you go all the way up to 200, you would do really good in one area and really poor in another. A really good. And so the computer had to take you through 200 questions to see, like, do you really know what you're doing or not? <laughs> <laughs> so the funny part was I'm I'm sitting there taking these questions and the question was, what, how do you treat pseudofolicolitis barber's itch? Okay, so basically that's just a big fancy name for like ingrown hairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I clicked the wrong button. It was multiple choice, A, B, C, D. And it was a, comp it, it said something like, uh, I can't remember, but it was wrong. It was wrong. And mm -hmm. when I hit it, I knew I pressed the wrong button by accident. My computer went black and it shut down. I thought, oh my God, I just failed. <laughs> I was scared. She was scared. Folks. But I did pass, so. Yes. Yeah, first time. So. Yeah, she Thank passed God the first that. time. Thank God for that. And then um, you mentioned you were a CNA, mm -hmm. but now that you became a licensed practitioner nurse. Practical nurse, Practical yeah. nurse. What was your job? I was charged. I'm a geriatrics nurse. Okay. And I absolutely 
love being a geriatrics nurse. What is a geriatric nurse? Geriatrics nurse nurse is somebody who takes care of the elderly. Okay. And now we also linked arms with skilled. So that is people coming off of the hospital Mm -hmm. into the nursing facility that may have had like some type of surgery, just needs some extra therapy and TLC and nursing care. So it's a nursing home. Yeah, it's a nursing facility, okay. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, any, uh, while we're on this, because I know someone right now is listening to this and saying, oh, nursing home, okay, I need to know more information about that. So, Barb, while we're talking about this right now, and you've already talked about encouraging people, if people need advice, if people want to actually contact you, they can leave a message in the comments. Uh, you can send me an email. Yeah. Um, you go have all information when the podcast ends. Yes. But also... Barb, why don't you share with some of these young ladies, especially the ones that are undecided on what they're going to do, Mm -hmm. how important is the nursing field right now? It's 2020. We've got COVID going on and things like that. And there's a lot of needs for nurses. Um, Well, I will say one thing. If you're out there and you're you're a natural nurturer, you're somebody who loves to take care of people, Mm -hmm. this is probably your niche. Um, Nursing is very, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. Um, Nursing is busy. Um, It's just part of the course. And um, but it's so well worth it. And the patients are so thankful for everything that you do. And you grow bonds and you grow friendships and, Mm. you know, when you're not there, they'll say, oh, you must have had a couple days off. So they miss you when, when you, when you do go in. Yeah. Yeah. They're awesome. Barb loves the elderly. I love them. (laughs) I totally love them. Yes. They're my people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's good. So, you know, when people are undecided because you've actually talked to some young people about nursing and they've actually taken your advice and, and they're nurses now. Yes. So, um, we have, there's also, th- um, such thing as CNA, CNA helpers mm-hmm. and they do things like make beds and, um, some will pass IAs or just different little things like that, that they're able to do. Mm. And you can pick up on these people who is, who is a natural nurse, you right. know, after X amount of years of working in this, you can just pick up on. And um, so, yeah, I've talked to some girls and they've con- gone on to be um, RNs and BSNs and urology specialists. And so, um, but it's all you got to do is talk to them. And, um, and some of them just know right away that this is what they want to do. And, right. and they know, too, that this is their niche. Mm hmm. Yeah, so if you're undecided and you want to know more information, like I said, once again, leave us a comment and uh, get in touch with us. And Barb would love to give you some advice from her perspective because she has the experience. Yes. She can tell you. And uh, definitely with the way things are going, we're definitely going to need nurses forever. Nurses are not going anywhere anytime soon, no, people. Definitely not. No, well, that's good. So now other life things. So we've talked about that. We've talked about nursing. We've Mm -hmm. talked about family and things like that. And, uh, but I want to know, and I think the listeners want to know as well. So as a nurse, you see so many things happen day to day, people's lives being lost and so forth, people being saved and helped out, brought back to life and the whole nine yards. How does that work as a nurse when it comes to your own family? Like, for example, mom, mom passed away in 2014. Your mother did. Mm -hmm. And uh, you really stepped up to the plate taking care of your mother. But you also put on your your game face. So for me, when um, my mother was in the hospital for an extended period of time for months and I would go in and um, help and do things for her just because I wanted to. But you, when, when it's your parent or somebody that you're close to, Mm. you're not the nurse anymore. Right. You're disconnected Mm. when they're that sick. Mm. You need the other nurses. You need the doctors to tell you what's going on. And they, you need them to help you be realistic. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was realistic when it come to my mother. I thought I could fix her. Right. And I did everything to 
try to fix her. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't. Um, And the doctor was fabulous and the nurse was, were fabulous. But I think they knew that I wasn't being realistic and they Mm. were being nice about it to me. You know, they would tell me, Barbie, she's not going to walk again. She can't walk. And I'm like, yes, she can walk. We just need therapy to work with her. Mm -hmm. She wasn't going to walk again, Steve. Yeah. You know, this was um, some of the factual things that when you're in a nurse or a doctor, it's hard when it's somebody that has a part of your heart because Mm -hmm. you're not willing to let them go. Right. Yeah. But she did good. She did. Yeah. She hung in there. She hung in there. About eight months. Yes. I think she was in there for eight months, and then she went to a nursing home for a couple months. and Weeks. Went to be with, yeah, weeks. Went to be with the Lord. Yep. Wonderful woman. She went woman. to be with Jesus. Yep. But you handled it well. And so, of course, uh, most of you listeners out there know that my mother passed away last year, 2019. Yes. And I thank God for Barb because Barb had nursing skills. And my mother had a stroke. It was irreversible. And so she went home and stayed at home. Thank God for Barb because Barb was able to be her day nurse. The folks in Missouri did a fantastic job. They allowed Barb to come in and take care of her. And also dad, hey, dad gave Barb the full reins and said, Barb, whatever Barb says goes. And now you're the daughter of your husband's mom. Yes. So explain how you did that, because I think you did an amazing job. It was a hard time, but seeing you in action really helped us out a lot. So when I am on our way to Missouri, um, I knew the prognosis on mom. Mm. Um, I knew that she had a a brain injury, um, bleed, Mm. um, that she came home to be on hospice care. Mm -hmm. Um, I, the whole way down there, we couldn't get there fast enough. Yeah, no kidding. And I just tried to keep reassuring you and dad and Mm. your sisters that it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Once we get there, it's going to be okay. Yeah. Um, my whole goal, I took my uniforms, my nursing uniforms. Yes, she did folks. She was Um, ready. I took my stethoscope. Locked and loaded. Um, every morning that I get up, I get up early. I got dressed. I got in my uniform mm. to put myself in the frame of mind that I'm here to take care of mom yeah. as a nurse. And um, I'm just privileged that I was able to give her that one-on-one yes. undivided care. Yeah. It was a privilege. Yeah, but it meant a lot to me, you know. So what I would do is I would take a nap during the day. Barb would take care of mom all day. Then I would get up at, later in the evening, and then I had the night shift where I just sat there and held mom's hand and talked to her even though she wasn't able to talk back. But I just had the night watch yep. and kept an eye on her while Barb would sleep, and then Barb would get up and do her thing, and I'd go to bed and take a three- or four-hour nap and it kept going until one day she was ready to go be with the Lord, and the next she knows she was gone. Yep, she went to see Jesus. Yeah, but you definitely made it easy for us. So thank you for that as well. Oh, thank you. It was a privilege. Yeah, it, it was. was a privilege. It made it easier to have a family member passing away and have your wife taking care of her. I was honored to do that. Yeah, yeah. So those were some of the rough times. Yeah. That we went through, but we always focused on the Lord. Yes. You know, um, dad got up every morning with mom and still did their daily devotion yes. and Bible read while he talked in her ear and held her hand and, yes. um, did that right up until Jesus took her home. Yep. Yeah. And then we found out a neat thing too. I want to throw this in there cause this is very important. I shared this before with people and I think I shared it in a podcast back when mom was passing away and that's when mom was having seizures Every 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes. And, exactly. Yeah. And I remember minutes. when I was driving down, when Barb and I were driving down, because it's almost 
it was a long trip, almost 30 some hours worth of driving. But I envisioned myself putting my earbud in her ear and playing some type of of Christian meditation music. Mm -hmm. And so she started having seizures and I remembered that. And I stuck my earplug in her ear, my little earphone in her ear, and I put on some meditation music and all of a sudden the seizure stopped. Yes. Which was a blessing. So I looked it up online and come to find out there's a thing out there called the Mozart effect. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you folks this in this show because I want you to know that if you're suffering from seizures, if you have someone that has seizures and they're timely and every so often they're having them, try putting some type of soft meditation music in their ear and playing it at a, a mellow volume and see if it helps control their situation. And it may not work for right. everyone. It might not work for everyone, but... The way when I read this article after Calm, I started doing supposedly it, supposedly calms the brain yes. waves. It's amazing. So to help the seizures. Yep. And it says that that part of the brain that controls the seizures can synchronize with the music yes. and actually calm a person down. So that was, I just wanted to throw that in there. But yeah, you did a really good job with that, Barb. So I appreciate that. So now we're going on to getting some advice. Yes. You're doing a great job, by the way, Mrs. Lewis. Thanks for being on the show. This is my first interview. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's and funny. So for, for those of you who actually watch us on Outlook for a Brighter Day, I got to share this. Okay, so he says, I'm standing upstairs. I'm wiping down the counter before I come down. And he goes, oh, you're on the end of the table. Because I've never been here when he's done an interview. I've always been at work. And I said, at the end of the table? He goes, yeah, at the end of the table. I said, Okay, so I come downstairs and he's got this, he's got it all set up all different. It doesn't even look like what I'm used to. So yes. he's, he's sitting my microphone up and he's got me in a different spot and the table all looks different. So this is a different atmosphere altogether, guys. Yeah, she's doing a great <laughs> job though, isn't she? Make sure you chime in and let her know how good a job uh, she's doing. It's fun to be here, though. Yeah, it is nice. By the way, we're in the basement of the house. We've got a studio set up in the yeah. basement, <laughs> so we're not very far away. <sighs> so we're talking about... Now, what I want to get to is this. We already talked about you stepping up and being the breadwinner and so forth, but now I want to know what advice do you have for mothers out there and parents in general? Because being the breadwinner meant you had to work a lot to provide for us. Yep. And when I say provide for us, folks, let me tell you, Barb is the type of person where whenever Samantha and Andrew had a birthday party, everybody knew about it. We had all the kids on the block yeah. were invited. <laughs> that was fun. Samantha would be sitting there in her princess outfit with her crown on. She knew it was her birthday. Same thing with Andrew. He knew he was the king. Yes. Everybody knew it. Barb would go all out. She would bring elephants and giraffes if she could have found them. <laughs> but, you know, you took it to the next level. Yes. Even though you had to work mm -hmm. five, six days a week at times, mm -hmm. it was always to provide for the family. Yeah. And there's many parents out there right now who are going through that same thing. Doing and the I, exact same and thing. And I know what thoughts are going it. through their head. Yes. So talk about that because they need encouragement. Yes, it's not easy. Because you missed out on a lot. Mm -hmm. But then again, you didn't miss out on a lot. Because when you go through all the photos we have, it seems like we've got thousands of photos. We're always doing something together. But talk to us. Well, the roles were definitely reversed. Um, you were home more than me. Mm -hmm. So I did miss out on things that a lot of moms get to see do be there for um nurses work 12 hour shifts right yeah so by true. the time i leave and i get back home i put in 13 and a half hours mm -hmm. so you might only see your kids a few days or excuse me a few hours out of a day which sucks but you got to remember you are their provider mm -hmm. you are responsible for me, I had to, rem I had to tell myself, you know, I need to make sure that they're taken care of and, you know, they get, they get what they need. Yeah. They get what I can get them. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just always want to make sure that I'm providing for my kids. So you did an awesome job. 
I mean, you did a lot. I mean, it was like the kids needed braces. Barb was doing <laughs> what in the world? What was that company you were doing? Oh, I did. Um, home oh, my word. Home interior. Barb would do home oh interior. Let me tell you something, folks. You know what I said about the elephants and the giraffes? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is crazy. <laughs> Samantha would need braces. Barb would go out and have a party. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, tell it. <laughs> I know that this doesn't even sound real, but back then there was this company called Home Interior and we sold home interior pictures, Tom's Kincaid pictures, candles, mm -hmm. candelabra, anything, you name it, flower arrangements. It was all of the rage. And so I would have these big home interior parties, <laughs> but they were bingo. So my home interior lady would bring all of this supplies, like all these pictures and stuff. Everybody would pay like $25 to get in. I'd have like, seriously, 30 some yes. ladies here. Tables would be set all up. And if there was a big Thomas Kincaid, Kincaid picture and you wanted extra tickets and you would say, I want another ticket and that's another $5. <laughs> and then some people made orders and yada, yada, yada. Well, I'm just going to tell you this. I made $1,100 cash that night on my home interior. Wow. That was impressive. Party. Here's the Bryce's money. And this is the time... My home interior lady in the in the beginning would come and do the parties, and she talked to me and said, you know, like, Barb, I just made $700 cash off your party. You need to get into this. So it took me a few months. I did it. My first party was $1,100 mm. cash. And um, so I put all that money, 930 at night and counting all the, everything out and all the orders. And the, we had such a wonderful time. Yeah. We ate and had snacks and and soda and just everything punch. And uh, I gave you $1,100 yeah. cash. And I said, take this down to the orthodontist. This is a down payment for Samantha's down payment for braces. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Boom. So, yeah. Yeah. That's how that worked. You know, stuff like that. I mean, Barb. Where there's a will, there's a yes, way. You know, this at. is what it is. I mean, yep. you got to think it through. How can I, how can I do this? Yes. Think outside the box. I've got to do this, this, and this. Barb was always X on the dot. I need this, this, this. How am I going to get it? Okay, here come the kids. It's time for sports. They need shoes. They need this, 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 and this. I, I did coupons for the longest yes. time. Um, so I used to be that crazy coupon lady. Crazy coupon lady <laughs> holding up the line. <laughs> I'm covering my face, hiding. Oh, dear. But she got good deals. I did, and I there was a time when I never paid for a mm. toothbrush. Yep. Toothpaste, toothpaste, toothpaste uh, deodorant. Yes, and when that Axe stuff was oh, out for the boys, <laughs> and Steve would get headaches because there was so there much was smell Axe the place smell out. around the house. But it was nice because our kids always had a lot of other children come mm -hmm. over and spend the night and stuff. And some of those children, their parents really couldn't afford to go out and buy them. Right. You know, all of the axe sprays and all this other stuff, toothbrushes and toothpaste. And so I had a closet full yeah, and we'd always did. make them goodie bags, Samantha sprays too. <laughs> and all of the kids had, our kids and other children too, always had always stuff. There extras. was, God always provided a yeah. way for us, really. Yeah. Like I couldn't go out and spend $40 on all of that stuff at that time for, for each child to, mm. to have all of their sprays and powders and lotions and oh, yeah. all of this. But I, I never, I remember I went into the Rite Aid. It was a mm -hmm. Rite Aid at that time. And I, the slip said $87 and I paid a dollar 27 <laughs> and I kept that receipt. <laughs> Yeah, that was amazing. That was that's fun. when the owners started thinking, we better rethink this thing because that's pretty <laughs> darn good. Are we losing or winning? Yeah, so anyway, it was things it was like fun. that. You, you went above and beyond. Yeah. So what's your advice for moms out there? And we're talking about moms because, of course, Barb's a mom. Mm. Um, your advice for mothers out there who have to hit the daily grind and get out there and are providing for their family and – um even though the thoughts are in their head of, you know, I'm not getting as much time with them as I would like to, but I'm putting in the time now for their provision. Well, What's your advice? I just want to, first of all, say, sitting back, because I know some of these women, mm. 
And they hit me right in the heart because I see them work their butt off, Mm -hmm. get out there every day, take their kids to the daycare or wherever early, Mm -hmm. go pick them up at night. You guys rock. Yes. You are seriously super women. You are super women. Mm. You are super moms. You ladies rock. Yes. And you need to give your all yourselves a big pat on the back. And I want you to put a smile on your face and be proud. Walk mm-hmm. high with your chin up for what you're doing yep. because you are the ones doing that. Yep. When you see that house that you walk into, you're the one providing that house. Mm-hmm. When you see that TV and those video games your kids are playing, you're the one providing that. That mm-hmm. food on your table, you're the one who put that there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm telling you, turn your frown upside down, yep. straighten your crown. Square your shoulders yes. and be proud because you guys rock. Yeah. And the other thing I want to tell you, and I'm going to tell you this as a mom who is almost 50 years old because been there, done that. Take time for yourself. Yes. Stop forgetting about you. Mm-hmm. Get your hair done. Get your hair done. Yes. Take time to do what makes you feel good be it go get a manicure be it buy that ten dollar foundation don't forget about you do not forget about you because you are important you're beautiful you're a hard worker you do this for you Mm -hmm. i know that you're thinking i don't have time to do anything for me I don't even have time to get up and get myself ready in the mornings. Get up 15 minutes early. Get up 15 minutes early before those kids get up. And do what it is you love to do. Be it meditate. Be it put your makeup on and do your hair. Because you know what, girls? When you look good, it's a mental thing. You feel good. Mm -hmm. When you look good, you feel good. You have a better day. Not just part of the day, but all day. Get up and give yourself that 15 minutes. You deserve it. And nobody else can do it for you but you. Please get up 15 minutes early and do that one rewarding thing for yourself before you even start your day. Start your day out for you. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, that's really important. And, you know, with that, I also want to share this portion, too, to you moms out there and, of course, dads as well. But remember, you're planting some powerful seeds in your children's lives right now, even when it may seem like they don't appreciate what you're doing. You know, just like the mom's going out there and you're busting your butt and you're working hard and it may seem like your child doesn't appreciate anything. Don't worry. Keep focusing on what you're doing. That fruit from that seed you planted will blossom down the road and they'll come to you one day and say, you know what? Thank you for everything you did for me. Yes. Thank you for the sacrifices you've made for me. I saw you when you were sitting at the table with your head in your hands with bills on the table and you were going out and working hard. And so I just want to give you that piece of hope. I've had children here um, when my kids were small And one young feller would say, he's a grown man now, he'd say, my mom bought me a dirt bike. I I don't know how my mom bought me a dirt Mm. bike. I don't even know where my mom got the money to buy me a dirt bike. But my mom was always doing stuff like that for me, and we didn't even have any money. That's what you do, Mom. This is what you guys do Mm. every single day. You make the impossible Possible. possible. Yes, yes. I like that. That's what they're doing yeah. every day. Yeah, that's true. And as a young adult, I can, <laughs> that kid say, you know, <laughs> I know he was thankful though. Oh my gosh. You know, he, he, he knew yes. what he had. No, that's good. Well, the last question I have down here, and of course I'm going to ask you if you've got any last words, but the last question I have here is very important because of course I've been married to you. We've been together for 30 years. I've been married to you for 29, so I've heard you say this a lot. But what's your advice for people 
when the enemy, when Satan's attacking and it seems like things aren't going right and it seems like you just can't seem to catch a break. What's your favorite motto and and how do you get through it? I mean, what's your motto? Well, I'll just tell the devil, not today, devil, not today. Mm -hmm. My mind is not going to be your playground. I am not entertaining this thought today. She's rocking her head, folks. (laughs) And when you get discouraged and you're having those moments Mm. and don't think that you're a weak person because you're not. Being discouraged is as natural as laughing, is as natural as crying. It's a feeling. We're hardwired. You know what? Say to yourself, I my song is, ain't nothing going to break my stride. Yes. When you are discouraged or you are overwhelmed and you're just like, oh my goodness, I can't do this anymore. I don't know what to do. There ain't nothing going to break my stride. And you say that over and over and in your mind and you make yourself believe it. You will believe it. And I can guarantee you from my own personal experience, there is nothing that will break your stride. Mm. Girls, you go, you rock. You're awesome. Yes. Keep doing what you're doing. Awesome. And be blessed each and every day in it. Yes. That's wonderful. Well, before I close, I'm going to close in prayer. But I would like to ask you, is there anything else you want to share with the listeners? No. Um, there's really nothing. I think we covered it all. Yeah. But I can. I, I would like to say this. If somebody's out there listening and you can empower another woman, mm-hmm. regardless if it's not somebody who is single or somebody that got a husband that's not doing well. It could be somebody that's ill. Mm. It could be somebody that's in a relationship and they don't know how to get out of it or they're in a bad relationship. Yes. Link arms with them and empower them and lift them up. Mm -hmm. Look out for each other. And help them through that. Yes. You did a great job. We need to link arms, women. Mm -hmm. We need to empower each other. Yeah empower each other. Yeah. Be well. Yes, that's powerful. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Good job, Mrs. Lewis. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for our amazing wife and best friend, my amazing wife, Barb. Lord, I thank you for her. I thank you for all the wonderful years we've been together. I thank you for all that she's done and all the sacrifices she's made over the years for our family. So I thank you for that. I thank you for having her on the show today and her sharing her heart. And my prayer today is that it will reach someone. It'll reach many that will be able to get the help they need, the encouragement they need, so that they can roll their shoulders back and be proud. Roll those shoulders back and be proud. And step out in faith as women providing for their families and doing different things. So I just thank you for that. We ask you to bless each and every individual listening to the sound of our voices today and tuning into the show. And uh, we just thank you for these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so there you have it, folks. Barb, thanks for being on the show. You did an amazing job, babe. Thank you. It was awesome. Yeah, that was a good time. Had a great time down here in the basement in the studio. So look forward to hearing some feedback. Remember, folks, especially ladies, if you have any questions, if you have any advice or any um, advice you want to ask Barb about, be sure to chime in and let us know. So with that being said, hey, Mrs. Lewis, thanks again. Thank you for having me. Yes. Hey, folks. Hey, listen, we love you all. God bless you all. Stay tuned for the next episodes, both Outlook for a Brighter Day and the Relevance for Today podcast. God bless you. Love you. And you rock. Yes. Peace. Peace.